Straight from the TMZ newsroom, it's the Hollywood Beatdown with the reigning UFC welterweight champion of the world. The guy everyone wow. wants to fight. The guy uh -huh. that Kobe Covington wants to fight. Uh -huh. uh, Kamara Usman wants to. Everybody wants a piece of Tyra Woodley. He's uh -huh. here right now. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Sitting at the throne, yeah. looking down, wondering why all these ants trying to fight me. Yeah. I can, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but we have to start with the big news involving Kim Kardashian uh, right now fired up. So Kim Kardashian was in a video released Thursday morning where she basically calls BS on TMZ. She came the, at our throat? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. In a big uh -huh. way over the, over the famous KK Kanye came West at throat. TMZ live incident where he uh -huh. talked about slavery being a choice and all that stuff. There was a video that was posted on E's website and, and blasted out. Kim Kardashian was basically like, TMZ edited the video Dang. and they misinterpreted what he said. They misreported what he said. So according to Kim, quote, if you listen to what Kanye said, he said slavery was 400 years, question mark. If it's gonna be another 400 years, that sounds like a choice to me. He didn't ever say slavery is a choice. So the problem with what she said is that it can be easily refuted by the video, which I was here, I know what happened in this room. Yeah. No video was edited. What, what he said in this newsroom is what aired on television. So let's see what Kanye West actually said. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like. You was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? He is clearly talking about something uh, in, in the, the past. past. He's talking about the last 400, not the next 400. Yeah, so what Kim Kardashian did is after this uh, clip went live on E! and all that other stuff, yeah. apparently they pulled the video down. Yeah. So she claims that in the heat of the moment when she was talking on video, that's how she felt. But when she looked back at the video, she realized that what she said was wrong. So now the video is coming out of the show. So they're yeah. pulling that clip out of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. And it sounds like, I don't know if she's apologizing to TMZ, but if she's apologetic about what happened. So what she's doing is painting a blueprint for myself. What so do you mean? I got something big coming up. Yeah. Throw some BS out there and right. finesse the entire game right. right before the release. So you don't think of this is like an aggressive thing from the Kardashians. You think this is just like a smart business decision. I mean, I don't think they're going to be outside pulling up, taking out earrings, Vaseline <laughs> in their face, <laughs> kicking off their heels about to square up. Right. But I do think that at a certain point, she wanted to try to take up for a man. She probably should have did it a long time ago when yeah. he first did it because now it's kind of dying down. You know, yeah. people, people are not as, you know, not as likely to kind of go off on Kanye West right now. So it's kind of weird that she would bring it back up. Yeah. That's what makes me think it's a, a strong finesse move. So how do you think Kanye feels about this? Kim's out there talking all this mess. What do you think Kanye feels? You know, the thing I do like about Kanye is Kanye pulled up immediately. When somebody said something about his wife, he was yeah. going at Nick Cannon, he like, he stepped up immediately, like, nah, right. man, we're not finna do this about my woman. Right. Like, literally within minutes. She waited, like, what has it been, like a month and a half, two months? It's been like seven months, right? It's been seven months since he did that over here? For her coming out now, it just makes me feel like it's a finesse. So, yeah. he probably knows it, because he did it to you guys earlier. Yeah. He busted that whole deal and yeah. then came out with the album that was dope, by the way. Yeah. So, he's, he's probably involved with it. He's probably teaching her and coaching her. All right, moving on to the segment of the Tower Name himself. It is called... On the Real, though. On the Real, I am fascinated by this story. Yeah. The UFC has booked Rachel Ostevich, the woman who was involved in a domestic violence incident, claimed that her face was all jacked up, so broke her orbital bone, suffered, you know, bruises all over. She's going to fight on January 19th against Paige Van Zandt. Yeah. On that same card, Greg Hardy is going to be fighting, too. Now, Greg Hardy was involved in a domestic violence incident bunch of years ago. Greg was convicted of domestic violence yeah. and then he appealed that and it was thrown out because the victim stopped cooperating and he yeah. claims that people don't know the whole story. So he does not have a conviction on his record now, but people still associate Greg Hardy with domestic violence. He's so always booked, gonna be associated with that. He'll never come from underneath that. Whether he did it or not, in a public eye, he did it. Right. So to put him on the same card as this young lady, Rachel, yeah. is this a situation where like- Well, how about this? Dana White said that he contacted Rachel and asked her for her like, her thoughts, her, her permission, I guess, to put him on that card. And she said she was totally cool with it. Uh, she has no beef with Greg Hardy. She has no problem with him fighting on the same card. So they're gonna go ahead and put them on the same card. No, I'm not okay with that. I'm just telling you why. I don't know what Greg did. Don't know what happened with this young lady, Rachel. I do know she was obviously struck because I, yeah. saw, the, I saw the marks. It's so many cards. Y'all can't just shuffle that up. If you are going to do it that way, let's go and have a domestic violence awareness deal the week of, have some people That's come out and speak. Idea. Do maybe a uh, you know a 5K run or something like that. Donate proceeds to you know people that have been involved with the situation. Right. Maybe that's what they should do. Now, Use Greg, it to turn it into a positive. Greg Hardy has said he's a changed man. He's changed his life. He's gotten help, rehabilitation, counseling, all that stuff, and he's a different person now. Dana White says this is in the past, and he's got to move on. He believes in second chances. Is there any merit to that? 
I wasn't there, so it's very tough for me to make a judgment call on what he should do. Has he learned his lesson? Should we accept him? Or should we give him a second chance? Because one, I never saw what happened. I right. wasn't there. And I, you got to try to stay out of, you know, because maybe every one or two times out of 10, maybe the person actually didn't do the stuff. Right. No, who knows? We weren't there. So that's a tough thing. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle on that. Yeah. Because I got six sisters, a daughter. I hear you. Mean, what so. he do? The allegations against him were terrible. But on the other hand, like, if, if he really has made an effort to change his life and become a better person, you got to support that, right? Just if he wins a belt and becomes a champion, would you be proud of that guy or would you be ashamed of I don't have to be proud of him because I'm not his family, friend. But you're in the same, you're under the same umbrella. There's a lot of people that walked around with belts that <laughs> I didn't say that about, but, you know, I got to focus on just keeping mine and doing what I need to do and trying to, you know, trying to stay off my own show. Yeah. <laughs> this is a brand new segment. I love it. It's called How to Win a Street Fight. Tyron, why don't you set this thing up? Well, we had to bring in um, back kick bag cock right here. <laughs> I flustered that word up. He wants to start smoke with um, our Australian. Um, yes, Charlie Cotton. Charlie. Yeah, you Charlie? guys know him from the TMZ on TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. We were shooting the show and he attacked me, Tyrant. Oh, I, so he started with me, verbally attacked me. Yeah, and ironically, you're not strong at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. You, yeah, you're, you look real strong. I didn't want strong one. So Babcock <laughs> says he was a, uh, a black belt in Taekwondo when he was eight years old and see. has a photo to prove it. I see the chi Do you coming. see that? I see the yeah. chi coming from the center. Uh, a first degree senior black belt. Cut Trophy. through this crap. Can you fight now? Does any of the, the skills that you learned when you were a child translate into they actual have fighting translated. skills now? It's like riding a bike. Charlie is lanky and weak. He has no athletic ability. Hey, Charlie, I hate he doing this. He has never fought. He's not here to defend Listen, himself. how many times have you and I spoke? We always have the UFC fighters in here, and that, yeah. that stuff translates. Mentally, so yeah. as long as you hear it, you know it. You. you hear I've it, know it, you so can what, do so it. So what does Bapak need to do to win this fight against Charlie Akai? Charlie, um, if, he's, if he's the beanstalk that he says, uh, I believe leg kicks is going to be um, adamant. You know, he's chopped those, chop chopped those legs up right. for sure. Can you um, throw a leg kick? Yeah, that's about as high as I could get my leg now. His so arm is probably going to be perfect. longer, so you yeah, probably yeah. have to move the head a little bit to get inside and yeah, punch. Right. Punch to the body. Definitely right. leg kicks, though. I want to see your punch form. Oh, oh, oh all right, all right. Okay, right. He kind of had a little, I'm, he had a little shoulder bounce to it. All right. Let me see a, a, a 10 piece. A 10 piece? I can't. Yeah. A hit, ten a ten, piece? Yes, you hit a 10 piece. If you can count to 10, you can throw it. I don't it. want to throw a 10 piece. I wouldn't even Bab do it. I'm, I'm, he ten piece. I'm, I'm a 10 piece. If you hit somebody I, I, 10 piece and they're still there, you lose them. Don't the fight. break my no, hands. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do, <laughs> do a 10 piece. Well, you got a piece. A piece with a side order. Eight, well, what, what should I do? Tell, I mean, jabs and then. What, what Whatever you want? you want to do. Hey, Charlie, oh, hey, Charlie, I think you might be able to get him. Judging off his inability to come in a moment. If the fight happened right now, you wouldn't be able to think. A tip, no. he's better come off. Yeah, it better come I, off. I, I will knock Charlie out in under a minute. Charlie and back kick Babcock will yeah. fight, okay? <laughs> We're going to be a charity. <laughs> Proceeds are going to go to domestic violence awareness. I, We're going to do I love this. Thank you. I love this a lot. week as a UFC fight with Rachel. This sounds great. And hard. That's January 19th. All right, are you down? I'm, I'm down. You better start. Right. I'm going to knock right, him Charlie, out. Charlie, you don't have knock a choice Charlie. The whole wide world is to yourself, Charlie. Back kick Babcock. Uh, as we do friends here at, at the Hollywood Beatdown, Tyron tells people what to do. And if you guys are on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to TMZ Sports. If you're on Facebook, slide over YouTube. Subscribe to TMZ Sports. More Hollywood Beatdown and other cool shit. We're going to we're gonna follow Babcock and, and Charlie. But first off, we got to get Charlie to agree. Yeah. And if he agrees, we're going to start documenting. We can put him yes. in like a... And we need uh, some prior uh, footage not quite the of champion. the back kick from Babcock <laughs> from his right. adolescent years. We'll see you guys next week.